Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to the Sunday Supplement. This is for March 21st. Uh, this may be our last supplement in some time, given that we are now focused on meeting in person and in the near future meeting uh, back in our meeting house. Um, so that's exciting. We have a couple of reminders and then uh, a few other uh, program notes, and then we'll get to the introduction of our speakers today. Um, the reminders are that on the 25th of this month coming up, we have a clothing drive, and that will be... Uh, from eight to nine at the church for any drop-offs, they'll be gathered there. Uh, the DI is low on clothing, so if you have anything, now is the time to come and donate. Um, on the 1st of April, we have a Red Cross blood drive we've been mentioning, and that'll be from one to seven uh, throughout the day. And uh, there is registration information, uh, and if you need that, please contact Jeff Young. Um, so the program note is that Next week, we're going to be having Fast and Testimony Meeting because the following week, there'll be a general conference. So Testimony Meeting will be held in person. Uh, we'll, it'll still be outdoors uh, the way we've been meeting recently. Um, and with any luck, uh, on April 11th, after conference, we'll be meeting together in our building. So that's very exciting. Uh, we look forward to that. <clears throat> we are very sad to report the passing of Sister Karen Stoley. Many of you will remember Karen. She's a longtime member of our ward. Um, and uh, she's been living in Utah recently, which is where she passed away, and that's where her services will be held. Uh, so please keep that family in your prayers. We uh, will now like to introduce today's program. We have a youth speaker today. We'll hear from one of our deacons, uh, Brother Aiden Weiser, and then following his remarks, we'll hear from Brother Mark Marriott uh, as our concluding speaker. So please enjoy. Thank you. Good morning, brothers and sisters. My name is Aiden Weiser, and I'm here today to talk about the sacrament and how we can keep an eye singly to God's glory while partaking of it. In Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 27, verse 2, it reads, For behold, I say unto you, that it matters not what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink when ye partake of the sacrament, if it so be that ye do it with an eye single to God's glory. Remembering unto the Father my body, which had laid down for you, and my blood, which was shed for the remission of your sins. What this teaches us is that when we partake of this sacrament, we should keep our eyes single to God's glory and remember his sacrifice. When we really focus on him, it will allow us to feel this, the sacrifices of the service, and it makes it feel more meaningful. Another thing is that it doesn't really matter what food you are using in the sacrament. It just matters that it's been blessed correctly. One week during the pandemic, we somehow didn't have any bread for the sacrament to administer at my, our house. My dad decided he'd use some crackers during the sacrament instead of bread. The, it didn't matter that it was crackers instead of the usual bread because the crackers had been blessed correctly and our family was blessed with the sacrament. We all need to remember the Savior and his sacrifice during the blessing of and partaking of the sacrament. There are so many symbols that point to the Savior. Elder Stephen J. Lund said, all of the sacra sacramental symbols point us to his gift. We contemplate the bread that he broke and the bread the priests before us are in turn now breaking. We think of the meaning of the liquid consecrated and then and now. As sacrament prayers solemnly pass from the mouths of young priests into our arts and into the heavens renewing covenants that connect us to the very powers of Christ's salvation. We may think about it when it, it means a deacon carries the sacred emblems to us standing as he does where Jesus would stand if he were there offering to lift our burdens and our pain. I bear these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm really grateful to have this opportunity to speak to you this morning. Um, I'm coming to you from Zion National Park. We're on our spring break, um, but I'm gl glad that we can have uh, technology that brings us closer together. Um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about um, how events of the world can come can sometimes uh, be troubling and um, sometimes I feel very unsettled and troubled by things that are happening 
around us and the world around me and there's a lot of noise and confusion and commotion and uh, it can make me feel uh, sad and, and unsettled and uh, by nature I'm a, a positive person. I, I, uh, I see things uh, very uh, optimistically and so when when things get to me from the world I, um, I start reaching out, I start thinking about things that can uh, that can help me, scriptures. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm really looking forward to conference that's coming up in a few weeks um, and Easter. Um, conference talks just seem to really always have a healing influence on me. And our prophet, President Nelson, is uh, particularly optimistic and, and hopeful about the future. Um, he still, you know, while still acknowledging uh, the troubling uh, and difficult circumstances that surround us, uh, nevertheless, he is always optimistic, and it and it always fills my heart with hope. Um, and I and I also find comfort in the scriptures and through prayer. Um, one of the scriptures that I've turned to recently is John uh, chapter 16 verse 33 where Jesus says uh, these things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world and that word cheer uh, is um, significant to me about being cheerful and embracing um, your circumstances and making the best of things and and really um, looking to to make of your life what what God would have you make of your life um, also one of the sections of scripture that I find really comforting and instructive lately is the epistle of Paul to the Romans in Romans chapter 12 of the New Testament um, and in that chapter, in verse 2, he says, Be not conformed to this world, but be, ye, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, um, in other words, don't, don't conform yourself to the world's standards, the world's beliefs, popular culture, things around you, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and to the will of God. Um, also in that same chapter in verse 9, uh, he says, let love be without dissimulation. Another word for that is hypocrisy. So let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affected, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. Um, and I was thinking about um, a talk by President Uchtdorf. Um, this was a conference address about being merciful. And he said, the more we allow the love of God to govern our minds and emotions, the more we allow our love for our Heavenly Father to swell within our hearts, the easier it is to love others with the pure love of Christ as we open our hearts to the glowing dawn of the love of God. The darkness and cold of animosity and envy will eventually fade. As always, Christ is our exemplar in his teachings as in his life, he showed us the way. He forgave the wicked, vul the vulgar, and those who sought to hurt and to do him harm. Jesus said it is easy to love those who love us. Even the wicked can do that. But Jesus Christ taught a higher law. His words echo through the centuries and are meant for us today. They are meant for all who desire to be his disciples. They are meant for you and me. Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Um, 
Continuing with chapter 12 in Romans, uh, Paul says, uh, Be not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them with which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. And then in verse 17, it says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. And I thought that was interesting, um, that idea of living peaceably with all men and how much in contrast that is to the world and how it seems like um, people are seeking out contention and um, not living peaceably. Now it does say, if it be possible to live peaceably with all men. And that does suggest that there are times that it's, it's difficult, it's maybe even not possible, um, but that we should strive to live peaceably with others. And then he says, um, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place but rather give pl place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, say the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. So uh, the idea is that um, if your enemy, uh, if you serve your enemy, if you love them, um, that is the best way to really destroy your enemy. The best way to destroy your enemy is by making them your friend. Um, and that, that it says, um, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Um, so I love that idea that we don't have to be overcome, uh, that, that we can be a force for good uh, in the world. And also, um, you know, that we, don't, that we don't have to sit by and watch things um, get worse around us, that we can have a positive influence um, on, uh, on ourselves, on those around us, on our world. Um, and also that idea that if there is evil in the world, uh, and certainly there is, um, then there must be an equal amount of good or greater amount of good in the world. And we, sh we should seek after those things and not be troubled. Um, so these are words that give me comfort, that give me hope, um, that bring cheer to my spirit. And, um, and I hope these are words that also are comforting to you. Um, don't conform yourself to the world, but transform yourself uh, to the will of God. Um, embrace his word, embrace uh, the humility that comes with uh, obeying and, and following the gospel of Jesus Christ, and let him be our example in how we deal with others, that when others try to um, persecute or, or um, uh, make our lives difficult, that we will meet that with love and with kindness and uh, and try to turn our enemies into our friends. And uh, I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.